Hi, my name is Michelle from Word Science VWR, and I'm here to tell you about essential activities for essential earth science lessons. Now, earth science encompasses a whole bunch of different areas, so we've picked four different ones to concentrate on today. Um, <clears throat> so to make it easier for everyone to hear, please mute your phone. If you have a cell phone, make sure to press the mute button. If you have a landline, star six to mute. If you have a question at any time, you can unmute or press star six at any time. And questions and comments are encouraged. Ask out loud or send them to us using the WebEx chat feature. If I can't answer it right away, I'll certainly get back to you, take your information, or, or you can, I'll tell you how to email me at the very end of the presentation. And you can um, ask me the question and I'll get back to you within 24 hours, okay? All right, so earth science. The first thing we're gonna talk about, um, there's an agenda that's up on the screen now. First is rocks and minerals and how to test for identification. Then we're gonna talk about three uh, brand new kits that are economically priced and they have a very STEM focused activities and they are, um, called our essential line. And our essential line can be found um, at the whole thing, this whole line of economical kits at wardsci.com slash essentials, backslash essentials, sorry. All right, now let's get started with rocks and minerals. And the first thing is our new essentials kits. You said I could do this, right? Our new essentials kits um, has a um, list here, there we go, where it has 12 different specimens. You can also buy them individually. They're smaller than our normal ones. Um, this particular thing is our minerals, and it has, instead of the um, numbers on them as our normal kits do, it has pictures that cor correspond to each of these uh, specimens that look very similar. All right, so let's talk about how we test for these minerals. First thing you look at is uh, luster versus non-luster. And luster is if it looks metallic. So if it's shiny, I'm gonna go back and forth a little bit as we do, if you don't mind. So this is shine, this is metallic looking, while this one obviously is not. So this one would have luster and this would be non-luster. There are also different classifications of luster that I'll get to in a moment. Um, <clears throat> let me read through these and we'll go to the next slide and talk about them in a little more detail. The second one is hardness and um, what we're going to be using to identify minerals today is our Ward's Rock and Mineral Test Kit. And it has all of the supplies that we're going to use, um, except for one that I'll explain in a minute, in this list. So luster, hardness, and for hardness we have copper, we have a nail, and we have a, gla a glass plate. Then there's streak cleavage and fracture, acid test, magnetic, whether it's magnetic or not, and the last one is color, which is not a, a, a good indication, but it might help because color can have some um, other elements that give it a different color. So you might have a, a halite that can be white or blue or yellow, depending on if it has other uh, other elements that are introduced to that, almost as a, in a way, kind of a, as a contaminant, contaminant, but it makes it look so pretty. Um, listed here also, it tells you what this essential kit has in it. Here it says apatite, hornblende, muscovite, hematite, limonite, milky quartz, calcite, graphite, pyrite, halite, selenite, and microcline. And on the bottom of this slide, 
there's two websites that are really cool that your students can actually go to and it'll take you through the steps. So it'll say, does it have luster? Yes or no? And then it will actually do kind of the dichotomous key for you. That's what this is really good for though, is to teach classification and um, dichotomous keys. All right, so let's go to the next slide. And here are some examples of some of those tests that we just talked about. Um, we talked about luster already. And then the, another one is the, the next one is the hardness. And the hardness, as I said, comes with three different parts. There's the glass slide. There is the copper or a copper penny you can use. And there is a steel uh, nail. On the back of the extra sheet, there are some descriptions and characteristics of each of these. And so on here, it talks about appetite and it says it's a hardness of five. So we're gonna test it according to this Mohs hardness scale that's on this slide. So um, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the piece of appetite and I'm gonna show it under here because that's the easiest way. We're gonna take the appetite and all you do is try to scratch it onto the glass and you can see it left some of the appetite. See how it's got a piece of the appetite, but that comes right off so there's no scratch. And since there's no scratch, it's not the, then the glass is harder than the appetite. Now let's see the copper. And the glass is what on the scale? I think it's at about six. It's kind of hard for me to see from here. <laughs> um, and then the copper on the hardness scale is about a three. And as you can see, if I take this copper and I take the appetite, you can see how easily it is, to, it scratches it. I don't know if you can see it with the reflection. It's kind of hard when it's got luster itself, right? So there's a scratch. So this appetite is harder than the copper and um, not as hard as the uh, glass slide. So it falls indeed in about that five range on the Mohs hardness scale on that sheet. All right, the next thing besides uh, another thing that you test with is the streak. This is really important because sometimes um, a mineral can be a color, but when you put it onto a streak plate, it actually leaves a different color. So it's a characteristic way of testing it. Okay. So here we have our unglazed porcelain or unglazed ceramic tile and we take a, one of the minerals and in this case we're going to take hematite and hematite, I'm going to put it under here, right? Hematite, if you look at the color, it's one I used for a luster before so it looks kind of silver and if you put it on the thing, I don't know if you can tell really well, hold on, I'm going to try it has a red streak. So you would expect it to be a silver streak, but it comes out as a red streak. This one is another characteristic one that comes out to be different for streaks. This is pyrite, also called fool's gold. And if you streak fool's gold, it ends up with a black, I know I'm trying, a black streak on the plate. There, can you see it, sort of? Better? Trying. Okay. You'll have to trust me, get the kit, and you'll see how beautiful the colors are. All right. So um, that streak plate, that's another important way that they test for uh, minerals to identify them. Next is um, if you look at the bottom of that slide where it says cleavage, they usually break these minerals with a hammer, and it does one of two things. If it forms a beautiful, like crystalline structure on the edges, and as you look at this one, um, I'm gonna try one more time, but this one's gonna be prettier. You can see that there, it's actually like lines. So if I were to break this, and they did to make this, you can see that it's got angles. So that's called cleavage in comparison to the other white one here which is actually quartz, and you can see that it is um, fracture. It's got kind of cracks, it kind of, kind of breaks in a jagged way instead of in a clean, angled way. 
All right, so that's cleavage versus fracture, and it depends on what uh, atoms are there and what structure they're actually in as to how they break when you hit them. So we talked all the way down to acid test, magnetic, and color. So uh, for the acid test, since it's hard to tell between um, these different white ones that I just showed you a couple of them, there are a couple of minerals that will actually react with acid. So I'm going to put my glasses and my gloves on, and we'll see if you can see that any better. Gloves have to go the right way. Now, I know which one it is, and I know which one's going to bubble, so I'm just going to pick that one arbitrarily. It is the calcite because it is made, it's composed of calcium carbonate. And we'll see if we can see bubbles. May or may not because it's so shiny. Kind of hard to see. Sometimes what helps too, um, you can tell the students to kind of, oh, it's bubbling good, but I don't know. You can kind of have the, the students scratch it a little bit with the, with the steel nail or anything that's sharp, and it'll uh, expose a little more surface area, and it will also um, bubble more. All right, so uh, the only thing that doesn't come in this kit for testing is the uh, acid. What I, they give you the bottle, so you have to make a hydrochloric acid. Some people use vinegar. It's not as effective as the uh, acid. So it depends on what you're comfortable with your students using. Maybe you want to demonstrate that one if you've got a little bit of a rambunctious class. All right. Um, so that's the acid test. Now I can take these off. And the next one is magnet. Magnetic, none, unfortunately, none of the uh, minerals that are in this kit actually are magnetic, but in case you're testing other ones, because this, uh, the identification kit goes to any rock and mineral, then also included is a magnet, so you can test to see if it's magnetic. Sometimes what people like to do is, uh, or you want to see if it's metallic, they also do paper clips to see, for magnetite, to see if you can get the paper clip to stick. And that's a good way to see if they're magnetic as well. And the last one, like I said, is color. Color becomes more important. We're going to talk about color when we get to some of the other rocks. But for minerals, it's harder. Like I said, you can have those contaminant, um, those contaminant chemicals in there. All right. So I'm going to stick all this away, and we're going to go to the next part. So we talked about minerals. And once they identify the different minerals... then you can talk about those minerals and how they combine into different rocks. So rock is a combination. Oh, I forgot that slide. Thank you, Peter. <laughs> the, uh, if you look, what I included here is a whole mineral identification. I just showed you how to use them. It takes you into a whole slew of minerals, and it goes luster. It's hard to see on this. But you can certainly take this out of the PowerPoint, copy it onto a sheet of paper, and blow it up so you can work with it a little better. But it says luster, then it takes you to the next one. It might say streak, or it might say magnetic. So each of those little boxes lead you to its own selection system.